Hello again and welcome to another Warhammer 40k Imperial Guard Tactics video. Now before we get into the meat and potatoes of this video, I just want to say a final small statement on the recent Guard FAQ, which is the fact that yes, we should all be angry, but we should have got all the salt out of our system now and we should be responding to this like the true Guardsmen that we are. Imperial Guard players... We are proper Imperial Guard players. Those of us who get into it for the fluff and for the love of the Guard and who fight with our Imperial Guard armies through thick and thin. Um, we now need to turn to moving on, to fighting post-FAQ. And all I can say is it's not the end of the world and I've done a video covering on how we can get round the FAQ and how it essentially made no difference when you boil down to it. Um... But I know there are a lot of you which are still angry and I just want to say there is actually a perfect quote in the Codex for how we should all be responding to this situation. I'm going to read it out now and some of you will be familiar with it. There are those who raise their voices in anguish and sorrow for the plight of mankind. Such faithless folk wail to an end to all days of a final damnation for us all. I say to you, these fools are wrong. Liars, I name them, heretics and sayers of doom. Listen not to such heathens, my brothers, for these are glorious days. Rejoice, for all may stand and fight for a truly righteous cause, and any man, no matter how humble, can earn everlasting glory through martyrdom of the Emperor's sight. Confessor Holdwin. If you think about it, this quote is perfect for the post FAQ situation for the guard which is the fact that look w this is not a time to be pissed off we still have the most powerful codex out there I know Eldar have come out this weekend and they're probably going to be destroying everything for a time being but we don't care about that we I would still say the Imperial Guard have got even after seeing some of the initial Eldar things, I would still say the Imperial Guard are probably the most powerful faction out there. We can put down so many bodies, enemies can't physically win objective games from us. And that's what the majority of the games are. So, don't want to labour the point anymore. We've all had our time of salt. We've all let out our frustration. But now it is to do... Now's the time to do what us Guard players do, which is set our feet... Say no further, roll them dice, first rank fire, second rank fire, and we're going to win games. And we're going to win games for the Emperor. And that's what we need to do. So, with that said, and with that feeling and tone of positivity, I think it is time to get on to the main bulk of this video, which is talking about... The Mordian Iron Guard Regiment trait and all things Mordian Iron Guard in the Codex. Because I have now played well over 10 games post Codex with my Iron Guard army, pure Iron Guard army. That's using the Iron Guard Warlord trait, the Iron Guard Relic, the Iron Guard Regiment trait. Um, and there's one other thing, but I can't remember. Those, those, all, all things Iron Guard. That's what I have used my army used for my army and I can say now that it's good oh stratagem and order I've used the more stratagem and the more order untold times and what I want to say is it's all pretty good there are some bits which are better than other bits but overall especially post FAQ I would say more than Iron Guard are now in the top three for how for powerful war, uh, powerful regiment traits. Okay. Um, I think the Morden Iron Guard relic is a little weak, but is not bad at all when taking into account what other armies currently have access to. And I think the Morden Iron Guard stratagem and order are uh, well. The Morden Iron Guard stratagem is very is such a hidden gem. I'm surprised other people haven't sort of cottoned onto it yet so let's take a look starting with the big one at the Morgan Iron Guard Regimental Doctrine so 
Let's take a look at it. Mordian Iron Guard Regimental Doctrine Parade Drill. Mordian regiments are proud, unyielding soldiers. They fight and die facing the enemy, standing tall in ordered ranks and unleashing a devastating fusillade of last fire. If the base of every model in an infantry unit with this doctrine is touching the base of at least one of the models from the same unit, the unit has plus one leadership and you can add one to hit rolls for models in that unit when firing overwatch. You can add one to hit rolls made for vehicles this doctrine when firing overwatch if they are within three inches of one or more other friendly Mordian vehicles. Let me tell you now, overwatch on a five is amazing. Last tournament I went to, it was Revelant, rev, revelant? Relevant in every single game that I played. Overwatch on a 5 is absolutely fantastic, especially with plasma guns. Oh, it's so good. I thought it wasn't that much of a bigger deal. I was wrong. I was so wrong. Because whilst not every army wants to get into combat with you, most of them will try and get into the combat with you anyway because even if they're not really that good at combat, 9 times out of 10, the 1 out of 10 time being Tau, 9 times out of 10, they're better at combat than you are. They may not be good at it, but guard are rubbish at it. Guard are terrible at close combat unless really specifically tricked out for it. Which means a lot of the time, especially with conscripts narrowly accepting orders on a 4+, plus, making it a lot harder to pull back and get them back in the fight, a lot of the time now, your enemy is going to try and tie up your units in close combat. If they can tie up your tanks in close combat or your conscripts in close combat, they will. They're going to try. They're going to try it. So, it should just be said that 9 times out of 10, 9 times out of 10 games, there's going to be some form of close combat. And hitting on a 5 plus is amazing. Means conscripts are always hitting on it as normal. Means guardsmen are always laying down plasma shots. And let me tell you, when an enemy demon prince charges your uh, veteran squad and you are able to kill it in Overwatch in the, thanks to a combination of your regiment trait and uh, Vengeance for Cadia stratagem, which we'll talk about later, uh, it's nice when you get a lot of hits. A lot of hits. So, yeah. Hitting on a 5+, plus, fantastic. The plus 1 leadership thing is now, post-FAQ, a lifesaver. The number of times, and I cannot say this strongly enough, the number of times that I have pl had a game where I have, uh, if I was a normal guardsman, I would have failed my leadership. But being Mordian and having often leadership 11 at times is fantastic. I know a lot of you are out there saying, oh, I don't think it quite works like that when you you know, you know can't really use another model's leadership and then boost it with like the flag and the Mordian trait. You're wrong. Sorry to be so blunt about it. You're wrong. And on the Warhammer 40k community page, they acknowledge that what you do is you, you take the leadership characteristic that you're using, whether it's your models or another model, so they've got an ability, you take the leadership characteristic of whatever you're using and then add the bonuses onto it. So if I'm using an Inquisitor with leadership 9, I my I take leadership 9 and then add plus 1 for Mordian Parade Drill, then add plus 1 for the flag and that's been confirmed by GW now. So, leadership 11 Garzman, let me tell you, I haven't failed a single fucking morale test with my regular infantry. Just haven't done it. Because if it's getting a bit close... I'll either burn two command points to keep them on the field if it's a veteran squad and I really want to keep a couple of plasma guns on the field. Or if it's a regular infantry squad, I'll just use 1d6 stratagem. 1d3, I should say, for battle shot. The number of times I've taken five um, five casualties and my opponent's like, oh, if you roll a six, you're going to lose another one. So I know, I've taken, five, I've taken six plus casualties. And my opponent's like, oh, if you roll... You know, if you roll a 5 or a 6, you're going to lose another guy. And I'm like, well, actually, one stratagem, not going to lose anyone. And you've still got four plasma, uh, three plasma guns in your face. So, suck it. So, yeah, Mordian Parade Drill plus the Overwatch is fantastic. I must say, maybe it's just the way I use my army and deploy my army. I have yet to have one of my tanks get into combat. I've yet to have to use the plus one for vehicles plus... Um, the defensive gunner stratagem. I've yet to have to use that combo, but if it did happen, it would be amazing. 
Um, so yeah, Mordian trait is fantastic. The plus one leadership is great. The Overwatch power is very good. Moving on, diddly on, the Mordian Relic. Okay, this is a bit weaker. Order of the Iron Star of Mordian. Mordian infantry model only. Each time the bear suffers a wound or a mortal wound, roll a dice and a four plus the wound is negated and has no effect. Um, this is a bit of a funny one because often my characters don't get targeted. Um, it just no matter how much Games Workshop bangs on about snipers, and we all in the guard community bang on about snipers, if you want to beat guard, take snipers. No matter how much we got bang on about it, it just seems our opponents just aren't listening. We're telling them how to beat us, and as far as they're concerned, they just rather whine and bitch the Games Workshop. But I've yet to face a solid amount of snipers. That will probably change with the new Eldar Codex, I won't lie. But... Um, what I can say is you guys know that I face uh, Blood Angels a lot. I have th two regular Blood Angels opponents, and they love Mephiston, and he loves Blood Boil. And that can target any of your characters. And I can say, the one occasion that my hero was Blood Boiled, I negated all damage done by it, thanks to the Order of the Iron Star of Mordian. I just was lucky and just made two made two um, four pluses so that was good that saved me so it's not it doesn't occur very often but it is nice the eyes to have more and when you consider most other armies are paying an absolute pre outside of death guard an absolute premium for feel no pain most other armies out there they're going for the bloody tenacious survivor. Six must feel no pain from the rule book. Most people consider that a good deal. And yet I'm here with my four plus feel no pain. And I think that's a bit. Bleh. So you see what I mean? Like it is actually really good relative to what everyone else is having to deal with. Um, the Mordian order. Um, which lets you target characters with rapid fire weapons. Uh, it's good. It is good. The problem is, is it kind of is only useful on... It's kind of only really useful on veteran squads with triple plasma gun. Which is good, because I like veteran squads with triple plasma gun. But... It's tricky to get into that sweet 12-inch range. Um... It is tricky because you you want to be in that 12-inch range, right? Because then you get six shots with your plasma guns. And maybe using the Mordian Stratagem, you could get more than six shots. You might get eight or ten shots with your plasma guns. But it's tricky to get into that 12-inch range because the majority of enemy characters that you face are well behind the front lines buffing their enemy units. And it's relatively easy for your opponent to keep his characters... 12 inches away for rapid fire. So the Morning Order is good. I have used it about five times. And it's always done something. But it's never killed a character outright. Apart from once when it killed Malnius Kalgar. And it really killed him. But I was lucky. So there you go. Um, but it's not bad. It is situational. But it's okay. Now, the Mordian Warlord trait before the FAQ was a big bag of shit. It was terrible. Post FAQ, Iron Discipline has helped me keep my not lost anyone to Battleshock yet streak post FAQ in the two games I've played post FAQ. Um, I've only, it is only coming to play, it's coming to play a couple of times each game. And I have been lucky. Um, and I, as far as I can recall, the what the time, the one or two times that I did roll a six and another guy ran away, um, with Battleshock, I actually got, got a four plus on the model for Iron Discipline. So what Iron Discipline does, for those of you that I don't know, is each time an enemy, each time 
A model flees from a friendly, friendly model unit within six inches of your warlord in the morale phase on a four plus that model does not flee. So it's a 50 50 chance of negating Battleshock again. Um, it's it saved me three guardsmen. For a free warlord trait, it's okay. It saved me three guardsmen. The fact that I'm not really using conscripts anymore probably says something. I, I'm i only not using conscripts because I haven't got round to using um, a Lord Commissar as my warlord and giving him draconian discipline. And I'm still on the fence about taking a bunch of Valhallen conscripts with Petrov's Mark 45. I'm just trying to see how Guard can fare without conscripts. And so far, the general result is, if anything, our opponents have shot themselves in the foot. Because now my conscripts hit, you know, I'm paying one point per model more for my conscripts than they hit in a 4+. plus. Generally speaking, that's what I'm doing. Um, so there you go. So it's okay, Iron Discipline. It's not great, but it has helped me maintain my streak, which is good. So we've done the Mordian trait. We've done the Mordian relic. We've done the Mordian warlord trait. Now it is time for the Mordian order. Oh, I've done the Mordian order as well, I should say. Now it is time for the final thing, which is the Mordian stratagem, which is volley fire. Which is so bloody broken and overpowered versus chaos that you have no idea. It is amazing. I have I have brought Magnus down to his knees. I am not shitting you with this trait. From one I mean I was lucky ish. I was lucky ish. I denied Magnus's four plus invan save. My opponent didn't make his three plus invan save, and my opponent didn't make very many saves at all. But even saying that, I think I took nine wounds off Magnus with a single ten man squad. Might have been more. I don't know how many wounds Magnus had left, but he only had like six left after my veteran squad had unloaded into him. It was insane. So what happened? Was I had, I think he'd already lost a couple of wounds, but I had a 10 man veteran squad with three plasma guns, a las cannon, and then obviously four las guns and a sergeant. Magnus was right in my face, and what I did is I ordered the squad first rank fire, second rank fire, then I put volley fire stratagem down on them, and then I put on them vengeance for Cadia. So what happened was my plasma guns each got two shots and I was really lucky and I got a six to hit with each plasma gun. Thanks to re-rolling to hits with Vengeance for Cadia. So three plasma guns, each one got four shots. Twelve plasma gun shots, I think I hit with eleven of them thanks to Vengeance for Cadia. Eleven plasma gun shots. Okay. And then something stupid like the majority of them wounded. And my opponent had a four bin run. But straight away, I think I, I think they plasma guns alone put down like eight wounds on Magnus. From three plasma guns, I put down eight wounds on Magnus. That's nuts. And then my last cannon went, I rolled a six to hit with the last well, I actually rolled a two to hit with the last cannon. And then I rolled again Thanks to Vengeance for Cadia. I got a 6. And my last cannon got to fire twice. So the last cannon hit twice. Unfortunately, it only did like 2 wounds, 3 wounds overall. Then the last guns went. And the sergeant threw a, a frag grenade at Magnus, who was just in range. Um, and so I brought Magnus down. I don't know how many wounds, but he, he only had 6 left by the time I'd finished with him. Um, and that's from one 10 man squad. So, how it works, those of you wondering is the Mordian stratagem costs one command point and you use this uh, stratagem before a Mordian infantry unit from your army shoots in the shooting phase. Each time you make a roll of a 6 plus for a model in that unit, that model can immediately shoot again with the same weapon at the same target. These bonus attacks cannot themselves generate any further attacks. So a lot of people thought when this came out that if you roll a 6 you got an extra shot. No. If you roll a 6, the model gets to fire again. So if that's a LAS gun, and you're in first rank fire, second rank fire, rapid fire range, you get 4 shots. You get a 6 on one of those 4 shots, 
you get another four shots from one guy. Which means four vet veteran las gunners were able to put out 32 shots. And they nearly all hit. That's how my plasma guns were able, and I was lucky, that's how my plasma guns were able to lay down a ridiculous number of shots into Magnus. You then combine that with the stratagem, Vengeance for Cadia, which is also one command point. So you can do all this with just two command points. And you use a stratagem, you select one of your Ashman targets to shoot or fire overwatch, reroll failed to hit and wound rolls from Oz's unit that target chaos until the end of the phase. So it's not super, super broken, overpowered, because it's not going to be useful against every faction. But the fact that Death Guard and Chaos in general have had a lot of love so far as edition, it tells you how powerful that combo is. I have brought so many things to their knees with Plasma Veterans with that combo. I cannot tell you anything. Anything dies. I've used it on a single 10-man infantry squad to turn them from a unit of cannon fodder into wiping out something like 20 enemy cultists in one turn. I wiped the squad out. 10 men, they just, all I had was a plasma gun and the rest were las guns on them. So that's 8 times 8 shots. 64 shots, I believe. I hope I'm not messing that up. 64 shots. Most of them were hitting. Because it's hitting on 4+, plus, re-rolling, thanks to Vengeance of Acadia. And then wounding on 4s, but re-rolling again, thanks to Vengeance of Acadia. It's just, you've no idea. It's absolutely insane. When fighting Chaos, there's only one regiment you want, and that is Mordian Iron Guard. So, I can't tell you enough how much I am now loving the Mordian Iron Guard. Um, I... I'm going to have to tear myself away from them for a little bit and try out some of the other factions out there. But I have to say that Mordians are really, really powerful, guys. Um, really powerful. And that plus one leadership is amazing. So going over it, just to conclude, just to summarize, um, the Mordian trait itself is fantastic post-FAQ. And it comes into play more games than not, which is great. The Mordian Order, where you can target characters with rapid fire weapons. That's okay, um, but I rather normally do first rank fire, second rank fire, plus volley fire stratagem most of the time, to be fair. Um, uh, the Mordian Relic is okay. I mean, it's kind of very weak. In It's weak for the guard, but when you look at what most of the factions are using, you realise it's actually really nice. You've got better feel-no-pain than the bloody feel-no-pain faction, which is the death guard, so that's nice. Um, Mordian Warlord Trait is okay. Um, it's not the worst, and it has helped me keep a few guards on the table, which is always useful. Um, but the Mordian Stratagem, that's the big winner here, guys. Big, big winner, the Mordian Stratagem. Um... When able, when combined with chaos, uh, um, with Vengeance for Cadia, I can't tell you how powerful that is. It, it, you will delete anything. You will delete anything. Um, assuming it's chaos. If it's not chaos, the bloody Volivire stratagem is just good to you. If you're going a first rank fire, second rank fire, someone, the Volivire Volley fire stratagem is just worth whapping down on it. It is. It is good. Um, that's all I can say. Uh, I will be playing a few more non-conscript games before I do an after-action report. Okay? Um, just a few more. I've only played two games, I think it was. I can't remember. For some reason I feel like it's more, but I can only remember two games that I've played not using conscripts. Um, and both of them went well. Both of them. Both of them, them were victories, so that's good. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and tell me what you think of the Mordian trait. Those of you who are out there, tell me what you think. And those of you who have used some of the other uh, Mordian regimental stuff, or not Mordian, uh, Imperial Guard regimental stuff, tell me how it's going post-FAQ. Tell me what the initial results in the first sort of feelers coming in. 
So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Please leave lots and lots of comments and I'll see you guys next time.